Hello, my name is Raymonda Adams, and I am a certified lactation counselor and doula. And the title of this video is The Basics of Pregnancy and Breastfeeding. And this is brought to you by the UB Maternal and Child Health Program. Now I'm going to reduce the size of the screen with my face on it so that you can focus on the slides. Basics of Pregnancy Pregnancy starts with conception or fertilization. Conception occurs when a sperm fertilizes the egg. A normal and full-term pregnancy lasts from 37 to 42 weeks. Each trimester lasts about 12 to 14 weeks. The placenta. The fetus relies on the placenta to survive. The placenta has two main functions, transporting and blocking. It transports oxygen, nutrients, and hormones. It protects the fetus from most chemicals in the mother's blood. And harmful chemicals such as nicotine, alcohol, and drugs are able to cross the placenta. The basics of pregnancy. Changes in mother's organs. The heart rate increases up to 90 beats per minute. Hemoglobin levels decrease. She will need more iron, so she may seem a little tired and urinary system speeds up to 30 to 50 percent above normal. Mom and partner will have a prenatal care visit schedule. In weeks 1 through 28, you will visit every four weeks, week 28 to 36 every two weeks, and weeks 36 to 42 or until birth, you will see the doctor every week. The stages of pregnancy. First trimester lasts 1 to 12 weeks. It is vital for the development of the fetus. All organs will develop by the end of this period. It is very important for mothers to maintain a healthy diet. The second trimester is from the 13th through the 27th weeks. Mother's abdomen begins to appear pregnant. She begins to show. At the end of this trimester, the fetus will be almost four times as big as before. The third trimester is weeks 28 to 42. It's a very good time to educate yourself and your partner about labor and delivery. You'll start seeing a healthcare provider more frequently in this trimester. Let's watch a brief video on baby in the first trimester. From fertilized egg to garlic bulb sized baby, your little one quickly goes through some amazing changes during her early weeks in your womb. She starts to take shape during week five, transforming from an egg into an embryo. Her umbilical cord forms, which connects her to your blood supply. She's big enough to measure by week six, but big is relative. She's just an eighth of an inch long. Her heart and lungs are growing too. Next week, she's the shape of a tiny tadpole and roughly the size of a pomegranate seed. Teeny limb buds are forming. Eventually, they'll become her arms and legs. Her eyes, mouth, and stomach are starting to take shape too. Your little one is about as big as a coffee bean by week eight. She can move around and swim now. Her tiny webbed fingers and toes are growing. Plus, her major organs have almost totally formed. Next week, she's the size of a peanut. Her little eyelids are growing in, and her tiny nose appears too. Her skeleton also starts taking shape, although the bones are soft. Your baby may be one inch big by week 10. That makes her about the size of a green olive. Her fingers and toes are becoming distinct, and her arms bend at the elbows. During week 11, your little one might double in size to two inches. She's the size of a strawberry, and her teeth, intestines, and genitals are forming. By the end of your first trimester, your baby is almost as big as a two and a half inch bulb of garlic. Her profile, complete with tiny nose and chin, have grown in two. She's come a long way this first trimester, and she's got a lot of growing left to do. Now, we'll take a peek into the second trimester. Your baby grows and changes fast during your second trimester. 
here's an inside peek at her amazing progress. By week 13, she's as large as a lemon, about three inches long, and she's learning how to swallow by taking an occasional gulp of the amniotic fluid around her. Next week, she's a little bigger, the length of a bell pepper. But by week 15, your baby could be the size of a large russet potato, around six inches long. Her bones get harder and stronger during week 16. Now she can flex her arms and legs. Plus, her eyes can slowly move around behind closed lids. Next week, she's the size of an asparagus spear, almost 8 inches long. And she's on the move, doing flips and rolls. She can also make a fist and hold it to her mouth. Her face gets more defined during week 18. Those little eyelids, ears, and upper lip all come into sharper focus. Plus, she can hear sounds now. Your little one may be over 9 inches long, about the size of an eggplant by week 19. Her lungs main airways start to form. Something super adorable happens in week 20. Her baby puts her feet and toes in her mouth. She also gets lots of sleep. Noise and movement can wake her up. So keep it down, would ya? Just kidding. Next week, your 10 and a half inch tot is making strong kicks and turns. She's also forming brown fat for warmth. Your baby's genitals are completely formed around week 22. It's possible to see her eyebrows now too, and soft warm hair called lanugo covers her. By week 23, her fingers and toes look like tiny versions of yours, and they've got fingerprints. Plus, your little one now has a secret talent. She can hiccup. At week 24, your baby is pineapple size, about 12 and a half inches long, and one and a half pounds. She could survive outside your womb if she was born now. Your little one knows the sound of your voice at week 25. She can recognize other familiar sounds too. When she's not sleeping, she snoozes 80% of the time now. By next week, she knows how to suck, and she'll probably try that skill out on her thumb. At the end of your second trimester on week 27, your little one is the length of an English cucumber, over 14 inches long, and all that moving around is paying off, giving her more and more muscle tone. Finally, we'll look at the third trimester. It's the third trimester, and your baby keeps on growing, gaining weight, and getting ready to meet the world. Here's a week-by-week -week look at the changes. Your little one is about as long as a large bok choy by week 28. Her eyes can open, and her toenails are starting to grow in. Next week, she weighs about three pounds. She's getting rounder as she gains fat, and her skin's becoming smoother. At week 30, she's about 16 inches long, the length of a bundle of collard greens. Her eyes open, close, and respond to light. Your baby's the length of a rhubarb stalk next week, and she's continuing to put on weight fast. She's around three and a half pounds the week after. That makes her almost as hefty as a cantaloupe. Your little one is up to four pounds by week 33. She swallows, yawns, and practices breathing. Plus, her brain now controls her body temperature. Next week, she's about as hefty as a sugar pumpkin, four and a half pounds. She's putting on baby fat, and her skin isn't see-through anymore. Your baby weighs about five pounds by week 35. She keeps practicing her breathing, too. During week 36, she's about 18 and 3 quarters inches long. Wow, that's the length of a Swiss chart. Her fingernails have reached the ends of her fingers. Her skin is pink, and those little legs are chubby. Next week, she weighs about as much as a honeydew melon, 6 pounds. Plus, her bones and muscles are ready for the outside world. The week after, she's about 6 and a quarter pounds, as heavy as a large cabbage. It's getting awfully crowded in there, and it's almost time to produce this produce. Your little one is about six and a half pounds at week 39. Her lungs are ready to breathe and cry, and as she drops into your birth canal, her head molds into a cute little cone shape. By week 40, your baby is around seven and a quarter pounds. She's come a long way these last three months, and she can't wait to meet you. talk about abnormal fetal growth. Small for gestational age, SGA. That's when a baby's birth weight is below the 10th percentile. It's associated with the risk of higher morbidities, attention deficits, etc. Premature birth means baby was born prior to 37 weeks after conception. This is associated with the risk of disabilities, low school performance, etc. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle during pregnancy can significantly reduce your partner's chances of abnormal fetal growth. Healthy lifestyles in pregnancy. 
Abstain from alcohol and tobacco products. And it's okay for the mother to ask for help and support. Get enough sleep. Eat a well-balanced diet and drink sufficient amounts of water. It is very important for mom to stay hydrated. Keep stress levels manageable. And there is a myth that pregnant women should double their caloric intake and avoid exercise, but this isn't true. Pregnant women only need to consume 300 extra calories a day. Regular exercise can improve common discomforts such as backache and fatigue. And walking is one of the best and cheapest ways to exercise. And it's something that you can do together. The body's preparation for breastfeeding. The first stage occurs by mid-pregnancy. The mammary glands become competent to secrete milk. You may notice that mom will complain of breast tenderness. In the second stage, this occurs around the time of delivery. There's copious milk secretions, blood flow, oxygen, citrate concentration, and glucose uptake increases. Removal of the placenta is necessary for the initiation of milk secretion. However, it does not inhibit established lactation. Here's a little breastfeeding biology. Lactation. Lactation is the secretion of milk from the mammary glands of the mother's breast. The essential hormones needed in breastfeeding are prolactin and oxytocin. Prolactin promotes the milk production, and oxytocin allows the produced milk to be let down. Milk production and secretion. The more the mother breastfeeds, the more milk is produced. The emptier the breast, the more milk is produced compared to a fuller breast. Stress and fatigue can negatively affect a woman's milk supply. A low milk supply can be caused by allowing milk to remain in the breast for too long of a period of time. And this also can result in lack of weight gain or signs of dehydration in the baby. Breast milk. Breast milk is made from nutrients in the mother's bloodstream and bodily stores. It has the optimal balance of fat, sugar, water, and protein. It's a nutritive fluid with immunological and growth-promoting properties. It evolves to meet the changing needs of the baby during growth and maturation. It contains properties that can defend against infectious diseases. The first type of milk. The first type of milk is called colostrum. This appears the first few days after delivery. It's a very thick, yellowish fluid, very rich in proteins. It has a laxative effect. It helps infants pass the early stools. It aids in the excretion of excess bilirubin, which prevents jaundice. It seals the infant's gastrointestinal tract from foreign substances. And it contains a secretory immunoglobin which are antibodies that are the first line of defense in the resistance against infection. It attacks germs in the mucous membranes of the throat, lungs, and intestines, giving baby protection until his or her immune system matures. Mature breast milk. The milk, which happens early in the nursing session, is a thinner milk, rich in proteins and vitamins. It keeps your baby healthy and hydrated. The high milk, which is in the continuing of the nursing, is a creamier color and texture, very rich in fat and calories, and it keeps your baby strong and healthy. Now, don't be surprised if you see other colors in breast milk because it can be slightly blue, green, orange, or other colors based on mom's diet. Here are some breastfeeding recommendations. It is recommended to start breastfeeding within the first hour of birth when at all possible. Newborns feed on demand every one to three hours in the first two to four weeks. Duration of a feeding is approximately 10 to 15 minutes on each breast. We recommend exclusive breastfeeding for at least the first six months of life. Exclusive breastfeeding means only the consumption of human milk. The AAP recommends infants to be breastfed at least until 12 months or longer up until the age of two. Older children feed less often due to their increasing stomach size. Positions and techniques. Latching. A good latch is when the bottom of the areola, which is the area around the nipple, is in the baby's mouth and the nipple is far back inside of the baby's mouth. 
correct positioning and technique will help to prevent cracked nipples and soreness and allows the baby to contain enough milk. Pumping. Pumping milk allows for the storage of breast milk when direct breastfeeding is not possible. It can be stored in freezer storage bags or supplemental nursing systems. You can help your partner with breastfeeding by visually helping to make sure baby has a good latch. And remember, any and all support you give mom will help to ensure a successful breastfeeding journey. Thank you.